there's a plane that has been flying over the house for like the past I swear 20 minutes okay I'm exaggerating maybe like one minute but it's really loud okay close enough hi welcome to this week's video I'm hoping this is a happy Thursday moment because I hope this goes up on Thursday um, but we'll just go with the vibes uh, yeah so this week we're not really doing a vlog we're doing more of a Q&A video originally it was supposed to be a sit down but I changed my mind because I have a lot of sorry that's my straw I have a lot of things to do today so I just figured let's just spend the day together and I answer the questions that you guys asked me on my stories uh, yeah so I'm first gonna have my breakfast then I guess we're gonna start the Q&A from my workout and then we just move from there all right, I am finishing up my smoothie and there's somebody coming to give me a COVID test. And so just to answer the first question, any outside travel plans this year? I am going to Tanzania tomorrow. Uh, that's gonna be a next week vlog. Um, it is a work vlog, but not my regular travel work stuff where I'm just doing tr um, travel content. It's something else. I'm really excited about it and I will give you guys more information um, after my test. But as I'm waiting for the guy to come upstairs, uh, what was the other question? What happened to you upholstering your couch? Um, I remember we did the whole color thing because she even mentions, uh, we even helped you pick out colors. So I'm still going to be doing it. It's just we're planning on moving from this apartment to a different apartment and it's going to be happening mid this year and it just didn't seem smart to reupholster before moving in and seeing what the vibe is. I mean, we might change up our entire aesthetic and everything so we decided to just go more in that direction just waiting because um, also we're going to have to do a lot of changes to the apartment so it's going to be a lot of... Um, demolishing things replacing a lot of stuff uh yeah and of course i'll be bringing you guys through that process but that's the only reason i have not reupholstered anything just yet so yeah that's the main reason why i can hear him at the gate one second Okay, what got done? I am reprocessing my hair just because of the trip that I have tomorrow. So why am I going to Tanzania? I am going to Tanzania to teach content creators there how to be a content creator, which is absolutely crazy to me because I never thought what I did could take me into doing seminars and master classes and what but it's kind of cool to know that like i can help people out so they just don't like make as many mistakes as i did and all that jazz ah, but it's crazy and i'm super excited so um i just wanted to just freshen up a little bit my hair again my hair i've shaved it i swear to god three times in a month I should not be doing this um, but yeah it's growing like a freaking weed so I had to reshave it and I'm re dyeing it and no I'm not I don't want to do blonde so I'm going back to the bronze one just refreshing it a little bit do you normally make a vision board or New Year's resolution I make vision boards um, I guess I can show you maybe in the next vlog because I haven't fully made mine yet um, I'm still in the process of listing things down it usually takes me about a month or so, um, the last time I made one, I was smart enough to do it like in December so that I was ready for January, but this time I was not. Um, so I'll probably be finished with it in the next week or so, so I can just show you guys in the next vlog. But I prefer vision boards more than, users, more than New Year's resolution. And also another reason why it takes me so long to create a vision board is because I like to list things out that I want to have on my vision board and then basically separate them into sections um, like 
five years, year, one month, and then I started narrowing down what's the most important, and then that's how I started deciding what to put on my vision board. Because if I just do it in one day, I will literally put everything in the kitchen sink. And it also, when I narrow things down, it helps me focus what I need to focus on this month or in the year or in the next five years type of thing. But I can show you guys once I'm done with mine. Next question about your car. Actually, I received two of these. Um, do you have any reserved reasons or why you just don't have one yet? Um, Honestly, the only reason I do not have a car yet is because I leave my house once a week. Yeah, that's actually basically it. And when I do leave the house, it's usually for meetups. It's either an event or I'm meeting my friends. And usually if that happens, I will have a cocktail or two. And I do not like drinking and driving at all. Like, at all. I don't play with those games. So yeah, that's the main reason why I do not have a car. I just don't need one right now, but I am going to be getting one probably end of this year or next year. Alright, as this processes, let me make my lunch. I look for the things I don't know. literally just having rice veggies and salmon it's become like my favorite meal prep um what happened to your septum piercing do you still wear it i had a septum ring years ago like years ago i had hair that's how long ago it was i mainly just took it off because sometimes i'll do like random commercials and they would like you can sometimes flip not sometimes but you can usually flip your septum ring back inside your nose right but the issue is, in certain angles, if you lift your head, you can see shininess happening inside your nose that's not supposed to be there. So for me, it just didn't make any sense. I kind of miss it, but I have a bunch of fake ones that I can wear, so I basically get to live the bad lifestyle that is septum piercings without, you know, actually having a hole in my nose. Uh, do you have a personal assistant? If not, you could get interns. Uh, who can learn from you and also assist you the only reason I do not have a personal assistant or an intern is honestly I don't feel like I need one just yet that's number one number two I work from home and uh, I don't know how to get an intern who I do not know personally who I am comfortable with being in my house and like that and I hope that doesn't sound bad it's just it's a it's a if you don't know somebody personally you kind of just don't want them to be all up in your house and be in situations where I can feel comfortable with running a few errands going to a meeting if I have to and them staying at home and I don't know doing paperwork or whatever but I know people have mentioned that you could have um, an online intern I just don't know how that works because I don't understand how they're able to do that without having access to like your emails and your Instagrams and your Facebooks and having those passwords and having access to everything. Nope. I feel like that's a lot for me personally. I just need to figure out the logistics on how I can have an intern be all up in my house and me feel secure and safe and not worried about anything and basically I guess go from there. Oh, I have a phone call. Hello? Do you speak Kimeru? I receive this question every single time. So I'm from Chuka. Wameru's. Do I speak Kimeru or Meru? Um, yes and no. But mostly no. So to sum it up, no. I wish I did. I know how to do like bare minimum. But it's, I, I, I'm not good at it at all swahili also received a lot of questions about that yes i do i know more than bare minimum you guys have to understand that when i moved back to kenya i knew not one word in swa like nothing i literally had to learn from absolute scratch and before people were like oh my god your mom never spoke to you my mom was raising two kids working three jobs trying to do a phd she was gonna sit there and give me swahili lessons and who else was i gonna learn from 
you know because there's always gonna be that one person and my mom is the best freaking human being so I, don't you dare bring my mom into anything thoughts on moving in with your significant other and when is the best time to do so now this is a person to person thing i don't believe that there's a right way and a wrong way i just feel like you have to be smart with it um number one i've just seen a lot of women and and young girls like 19 years old i don't think you should be moving in with your man at the age of 19 but that's neither here nor there especially fully moving in like if you're still with your parents house and you're just there once in a while that's different but fully moving in I, that's crazy to me but my biggest rule is if you're moving in with your significant other don't just be like a guest i don't know if that makes sense contribute to the household and number one it's just i think it's it's a healthy way to have a, a relationship because relationships are 50 50 in everything else in life so why not it be like that even with things within the household but um outside of that i just my mom taught me this it, it's just it's it you need to keep yourself safe as as a woman when you live in a house that is owned by a man um that everything is owned by a man, that everything was paid for by a man. If anything were to happen, you have lost everything. And now let's say you guys have lived together for like eight years and you find out he's low key, kind of an asshole. And he doesn't think that like you deserve anything in the house. You, you are like you basically eight years of your life have gone completely down the toilet and you have to start again. Houses and homes and it being your home takes a very long time to build so it's not a thing where if you move out and you have nothing you can be able to rebuild in like two months couches are expensive actually just getting the apartment is expensive beds are expensive couches are expensive dining tables are expensive microwave stoves like all these things cost a lot of money and it's really hard to build all that up in a short period of time so with your partner have it 50 50 or at least i don't know 30 70 something like contribute something like buy the couch buy and don't go 50 50 per item i don't believe in that i think it should be i uh you buy the couch i'll buy the bed just in case of anything happens you can take your damn couch and he can take his damn bed but then now if you guys go 50 50 on the couch and then 50 50 on the bed how do you guys separate that like, who gets what you know what i'm saying all right all showered doing my Kinky routine, the whole shebang de bang bang. Now, with the last points that I kind of just brought up, same rules apply to men. And I'm just saying that because I know someone's gonna be like, but women can also be assholes too when they break up and things, and they can. Nobody's disagreeing with that. Yeah, just always protect yourself if you can, because why not? Another thing, and I saw this argument before where some couples have been together for a long period of time they're not even married and they decide to do joint accounts now i usually don't mind joint accounts if you do it like i prefer joint accounts to be you have your money he has his money but you guys have a separate account that you both agree how much money to deposit into that account and you both deposit into that account you know what i mean and that is your joint account but you still have your money and he still has his money right but I don't believe that you should put a joint account like where you close all your accounts and put them all into one account if you are not married. Now, if you're married, that's your business. I could care less. Live your best life. Um, love is love, I guess. What else? But if you're not married, don't do that. Oh my gosh. Like it's not. No. And also, can you imagine a world where every single time you have to get your nails done, you have to tell your partner like, oh, babes, I need to get my nails done. So I'm going to be going to the joint account to get money to get my nails done. And then men being men will probably be like, but didn't you just do your nails? And then you have to be like, well, yeah, that's the thing about nails. You have to keep doing them in order for them to keep nailing. You know what I mean? And they just don't get it. And I don't feel like having that conversation with you. You know what I mean? Respectfully, as my partner, I'm not you. I don't want to, I do not want to have that conversation with you. I just want to get my nails done. So that's something to think about. But also, at the end of the day, grown people be doing grown people things. And also, I'm not in your relationship. So live your best damn life. That's just my view. Skirt, skirt. All right. We are now 
packing for TZ. I just got my text saying that I don't have COVID. Literally was waiting for that before doing anything like this. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so we have like a couple body questions. You used to be petite. How did you get your current body? And you look good in everything you wear. First, the second question. I look good in everything I wear. I look good in everything I show you guys. I've worn things that I'm just like, wow. You look like a trash bag and I've literally won other things that look like a trash bag but look fantastic on me you know what I'm saying like not everything looks good on me it's just I show you guys what looks what I eventually approve and will wear and then I showcase that how did I get to this like to the size of the body that I have now I feel like we've discussed this many times before but here's the thing about my body type I'm naturally a thick girl I used to be 95 kgs when I was younger. Like, I'm just naturally a thickums. And when I used to be very petite, I was not okay. <laughs> like, I was beyond sad. I, like, I was just not in a good headspace in life, in any aspect of my life, relationship, uh, work-wise, financially. Like, that's, that's why I was so petite. Like, I was just going through a lot during that period of time i would cry for sure every single week at the very least like every week i would cry about something and it was always like an actual like there was a reason why i was sad either potential jobs that i thought would come through would not come through no jobs were coming through for like months at a time me having moments where i have like 200 bob between me and poverty like that was like that's all I had in all my account. Like, you know what I'm saying? Social media is a lie. Oh, but no, but that's the reason why I was so petite. Like I was just going through so much. And I'm also one of, and the reason, okay. Another thing about me is I don't like to be a burden to people. So even with my mans, like he didn't know I was going through that stuff. Like I kept all that stuff to myself. I mean, of course I'd talk to him about like, you know struggling a little bit with work here and there but i would never um be fully honest about how bad things are going and i don't know it's like it's a horrible habit of mine i'm really trying to kick it but i i do i absolutely hate being a burden it usually takes me a very long time before i can ask for help or yeah so that's what was happening um, so that's why I was so petite. I just was not in a good space. And as soon as I got into a better space, I started gaining weight again. You know how some people eat when they're sad? I don't eat when I'm sad. And when I'm happy, girl, they call me thickerella. And what is your body goal? My body goal, in all honesty, is just what I had um, in 2020. When I was being super fit and working out like... I loved that body like it was it was it was my body that I have now but just toned and like slightly smaller but mainly toned I really loved my body then so that's that's what my body goal is 2020 um, I mean of course I could say oh I want to have this and this a person's body but I've kind of just stopped telling myself to stop doing that I mean I do that on insta stories don't get me wrong but that's just more of appreciation I don't genuinely be I'm not genuinely like oh god why don't I have that body because we all have such different body types so even there's some bodies that I will showcase on my insta stories and be like oh my god I want this body so much ain't nothing on this planet that's gonna get me that body because we are shaped differently like the body like the way their specific muscle structure is is different from mine so I'm never actually gonna have that exact body but I could aspire to be something close to that you know what I'm saying but yeah my body goals is what I had in 2020 that body was fire I enjoyed that body anyway so that's what we're working on getting back um yeah so I just need to have uh, right now I am 72 and I'm just trying to get back to 68 kgs I should be at 71 right now but I've just been so not as consistent as I would have liked to be um, I'm not really sure about this question but do you have a crash of brands when creating content 
like she spelled it like crash like crashing into something do you have a crash of brand like do i have moments when some brands like i can get in trouble for doing one brand because i'm doing the other brand no because i usually would never say yes to a job that would be a conflict of interest so no that doesn't happen if it's do i have a crash from all the brands that i work with when creating content yeah that's burnout um i had that last year it was bad but i mean the good thing about me is like i have such a good working relationship with the brands and the clients that i have that they're usually so incredibly um understanding so even actually all of them when i just like i reached out to them end of november and i was just like yo yo i'm crashing and burning i don't know what i can do so some guys um, reduced my workload like my KPIs and they just were like we can move it to the next month or the month after whenever you feel comfortable some guys just asked me like listen I understand just take a break and then we'll get back to it in January I'm really blessed to have people like that like they really oh you have no idea how that was so amazing for me your dream destination I honestly don't really have one I mean I'm kind of usually down to go anywhere um, there's just certain places I could care less about going to, but I don't want to say it because if, a, if I'm given the opportunity, I'd probably be like, meh, let's see. Unless it's like a war-torn country, but outside of that, I'm, I'm interested in most places. Money-saving tips. Uh, my money-saving tips kind of just, I don't know, I didn't really do it on purpose. It just kind of happened by mistake when it, came, when it comes to me. And where I am financially just because when I first started off as a content creator like money was so all over the place it was never guaranteed like one month I could be doing so good not even so good actually when I started off one month I could be doing like barely surviving um, and then like three more months of zero money coming in so I kind of just had to learn how to live way below my means and another huge thing that really helped was as I got more financially stable I kept to those rules so for example you know there are a lot of people who when they get a pay raise like let's say you started off by making 100k a month and then you get a new job that pays you like let's say 250 there are a lot of people who their first instinct is I'm just gonna move into a bigger place I'm gonna get this I need to buy a new car now no, I still majority of the time live the same way I did a few years ago. The only difference is maybe of, you know, like the certain products that I, I love using now when it comes to skincare and things like that, that are a little bit more expensive that I um, purchased now that I never would have before. What else? Like I'll do... I'll go to certain restaurants that I never I never thought I could go to a few years ago but I balance it off I don't make it into a thing where that's what I always do I do it once in a while when it comes to skincare products I will do like you know I will invest in products that I feel like ha are doing great things on my skin and then maybe spend less money on shoes so I, I still try to balance things out in a way where I'm not living above my means and the way I had even mentioned like we're moving into a new place we could have moved into a new place like forever ago but he and I just were like no why why are we doing that just because that's what a lot of people were kind of asking us to do I don't know if that makes sense like a lot of people would just be like why, why do you still live in a two-bedroom apartment move into a bigger space and I'm just like but we don't got no kids why are we moving to a bigger space and I think it really worked out for us that way. So money tip, live way below your means. And another money question was, um, how do you save your money? Is it 50, 30, 20? I don't have the same rules as everybody else, just mainly because my money comes in differently. Like I have, like I don't have the exact same amount of money coming every single month. So I can't say I'll only put 50% down, 50% here, 50%, whatever. What I usually do is I divide my checks where 
Um, so I have three different savings of like three different accounts. So my bigger checks go into one account where when it gets to a certain amount, I immediately invest it by putting it in bonds or whatever the case. Then I have another account that is for mainly for USD. So that's just for if I do jobs with certain clients, I pay you in USD. It can be banked there. And then the other account is my miscellaneous. So for that one, that's like my smaller uh, my smaller checks so that's how I divide it <sighs> my job makes it different from other people because most people have I make exactly 300 a month I make exactly 100 a month so you can be able to divide it that way but mine is all over the place I don't have a certain amount that I make every single month uh, do I work out with a coach no I do not um, I've tried it before I just it's not my thing I don't like working out with people point blank period i do not enjoy it i kind of also have this thing of as soon as there's one human being next to me i will immediately start complaining about something i'll complain about not wanting to do it i will try to negotiate my way out of doing it i work out better and harder when i work out by myself but that's just my personal preference how do i approach brands i'm gonna put the link down below i've done this video already about how to approach brands as a content creator basically just how to when it comes to content creation i shot it a couple of years ago maybe i can do an updated one but you can use that just as a starting off point and i'll put it down below isn't this cute it's cute little body so she's so cute why do i not make my youtube videos downloadable so my youtube channel has been monetized and it's under certain company so in order for it to be monetized in kenya it has to be under this company they're called m m something m something i keep forgetting what they're called and these companies make like they basically control whether or not your videos are downloadable and the reason why they make sure that they're not downloadable is because it messes with our monetization so for example if i make the video downloadable somebody can download the video and then take it to their friends and then they watch it as opposed to people just watching it on YouTube itself so that I can make a cut out of people watching because also a lot of people don't realize as a content creator like this money thing is it's it's important to us in order for us to be able to continue doing this like for example YouTube is technically a free app I know internet costs money but it's a free website so we are producing content for free and it's placed there for people to consume for free so we still need to be compensated for it because certain videos like this video has taken me the whole day to shoot because I've basically been bringing you guys with me and it's still gonna take me another four more hours to shoot um, there's some other videos that can take up to 12 hours to edit did I say shoot sorry it's gonna take me another four hours to edit there's some other videos that take 12 hours to edit and take like a week to shoot it's a lot of work and we still need to be compensated for it and it's not like people assume that we make so much money off of youtube in kenya we do not like the ad rate in kenya is horrendous but even the smallest amount is very beneficial for us to be able to continue doing this so that's the main reason why it's not downloadable but also specifically i don't have control as to whether or not it's downloadable because i'm not the one who presses a button to make it downloadable uh kenyan brands that ship worldwide most kenyan brands actually ship worldwide you just have to be willing to be pay you just have to be willing to pay the fees to ship them so like the dhl fees and blah 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 blah, blah. the biggest things that you just have to ask them like if it's for example icon or new level or itikadi a lot of them if you actually just dm them they will respond like yes it's possible please give us your location this is how much it's going to cost and you just have to agree to it if you don't agree to that cost then i guess no one's shipping anything how do you manage to maintain your thigh gap what thigh gap girl i don't have a thigh gap where Updated skincare routine. I think I can do that for my next vlog when I'm in TZ. So I think we'll do it that way. Uh, what are my future career goals? My future career goals are basically to get to the point to where my name is a brand in itself. Now, I've tried starting my own clothing line and everything. Um, it went well. Like everything sold out in the day, which was fantastic. And I loved it. It was great. Yay for me. But... 
it made me realize that I really don't want to have to start my own brand by myself. I would rather like collaborate with another brand to create a collection or um, I don't know be part of another brand and they help me basically build my brand. I don't know how to explain it but I 100% know I'm not built to start my own brand. Um, number one I really enjoy cre uh, creating content and if I do that and I know most people who have you know started creating content then they went into starting their own business and starting your own business takes up your entire time and one thing is gonna end up having to you know no longer be a priority and most of the time it's gonna be the uh, content creation and I don't want to do that just yet so uh, so my future I mean I'm, like I would like to start my own brand but under somebody else who can kind of help me with that aspect I can't wear heels so I only wear sneakers but I want to be elegant though how do I achieve that if you don't like do you just not like the way heel like you can't wear Oh, you can't wear heels so you're very uncomfortable in heels there's so many different types of heels that a lot of people never try out especially like sneaker heads kitten heels I personally am NOT a huge fan of kitten heels but if worn the right way a kitten heel can actually be fire chunky heels like a nice chunkinator where you feel supported and you feel comfortable walking and you can just go I feel like a lot of people make the mistake of going straight to pumps especially when you go from sneakers um, the reason why pumps are not for everybody because they do squeeze your toes and they can be very very painful if you are not used to them so I feel like a lot of people kind of mess up with that or they go straight to a stiletto where I'm just like no baby you've been so used to sneakers you need to like come sorore come sorore so a nice chunky heel wedges are a good way and starting off with like two inches three inches before just jumping straight into like a four inch heel because even for us people who wear heels four inch five inch heels they're not comfortable like we're not wearing them being like ah oh, this is so nice we're wearing them being like this hurts but it goes so good with this outfit so we shall tolerate the pain like i know i've said in the past i'm not built to suffer but for a cute ass outfit your girl can suffer. She can suffer. She can suffer. Have you ever worn heels and gone to the club and then danced all night? And then you get home and you take off your heel. And just the just the bare concept of just putting your foot flat hurts so bad. And then when you finally get your foot flat, you realize your last three toes are completely numb. Like, you apparently stopped feeling your last three toes five hours ago, but because you're numb, you didn't even realize it. And now, because they're numb, because clearly you were pressing on some nerve that cut off all circulation, it's going to be numb for another good 24 hours, sometimes 48. There was a time my pinky toe was numb for three days, but I looked so good. So if you're a sneakerhead, <laughs> just start with chunky heels. I know I'm not selling the dream of heels but you can get there but you also have to be willing to die on the process okay sorry i had to finish that one suitcase just so i can move on for girls like me who've never visited a gynecologist due to finances are we in danger of anything so let's just unpack this a little bit so i had mentioned in my last video i was talking about uh, seeing my gynecologist who is dr sule um that i recommend seeing a gynecologist every year but it's not like you don't have to see a gynecologist every single year you can see a gynecologist once every three years or something like that a lot of it is determined by your sexual activity how many partners you have to determine how often you need to see a gyna outside of like your regular screenings when it comes to your sexual health uh like stis and things like that you also need to see a gyna when it comes to your cervical health now when it comes to your cervical health when you do the pap smear that's actually what they're looking for they're just looking to see the health of your cervix and to see if there's any admin abnormalities or anything to that effect that could in the future cause you cancer and a lot of women do find themselves in situations where they just have not seen a gynecologist for a very long time and they start getting the first signs 
of cancer through like the cervical screening some people see it too late so i'm just very very paranoid when it comes to that i have a friend whose mom passed away from cancer um i have another friend whose aunt passed away from cervical cancer so i'm just generally just paranoid when it comes to things like that so that's why i see mine once a year but i just always just like to make sure that i'm good like i also see a doctor every year to make sure that like I'm good. I also go see a, see a dentist to just make sure my teeth are okay. But when it comes to the financial aspect, there's so many places you can go that are a lot more affordable. Um, you can go to Nairobi Women's Hospital, um, get an appointment there. I'm not really sure about the exact pricing there, but I know it's a little bit more affordable than Dr. Sule because uh, she is a private physician. How to deal with pressure from family when it comes to choosing a career. Um... I feel like a lot of this is lack of communication. So my mom, she's a professor. So when I started doing content creation or blogging or YouTubing, whatever you want to call it, she was very much confused as to what it is that I'm going to be doing with my degree. And I, we, like me and her just always had a level of communication of this is what I'm doing, but I'm also doing these other things to just always make sure that I am safe for the future because i mean a lot of parents they don't want you to pick a career just because they want you to pick a career a lot of them they just want to make sure that in the future you're going to be okay career wise financially everything they just want to make sure that you're okay so my mom basically just told me when i started doing this whole thing while i was in college was listen do it doesn't bother me but stay in school do not fail one class you fail one class you're done Number two, we don't come for money. Don't ask me for things. Don't ask me for a camera. Don't ask me for these things. It's expensive. I can't afford it. So as long as I kind of stayed within those lines, my mom wasn't so bothered. And I still made sure to fulfill her wishes by giving um, what she wants me to do a chance. She wanted me to go to college. I did it just so I can always have a degree and if I need to do a master's to get a specific job that I need to I already have that prepared and ready to go um, it's just she kind of started seeing like after college I really did not want to do a master's I've never really been a college person or school person per se I, I believe in education but I've just never been into that aspect of education and she kind of just saw that I was starting a career that does not exist and I just made it a point to educate her and keep her involved in the process so she always kind of knew that like she might be okay she might be okay and even when I was still doing the blogging thing that gave me absolutely no money I would do side hustles that would bring me some small money here and there as I grew what it is that I'm doing as, as I grew my career in the field that I'm in right now so I feel like number one communication just so everybody's kind of on the same page and so you can understand if the parents are very much like hell no we won't go you ain't doing that if you go stay under my roof i honestly have no idea how to deal with that because i feel like that is such a tough spot because it's almost it's actually basically either do what i'm doing or get the hell out of my house which is really harsh to give that to your child at the age of like 20 because we're, we're like where are they gonna go like where are they gonna go um when it comes to that aspect, I'm not really sure, but I feel like a lot of it's just communication because also I have other relatives who are also in the creative field and also all my friends are in the creative field and they kind of all had that same level of communication with their parents of, this is what I really want to do, but I know you really want me to do this, so I'm going to do both of them just so you can relax on the second thing and so you can give me a little bit more leeway to do the first thing. I feel like that was a short way to just say the first half of what I said. Um, yeah. Politics. Have you ever voted... And why don't you talk about politics? So I have voted. I have voted twice. It just, okay, so when it comes to talking about politics, I, I grew up in the US. So, you know, Americans be funny about like politics. It, they just recently started opening up, especially after Black Lives Matter and everything like that. And they really hate Trump. But generally, Americans are very like, I will talk to you about the dirty, dirty things that I have done to my wife, but I will not talk about who I'm gonna vote for and I kind of grew up in that so that's just how my brain um works and that's a joke from Dave Chappelle I believe I believe it's Dave Chappelle yeah so there's that aspect number two 
uh when it like i've when i do vote i have mentioned like oh guys voted today but i just don't talk about my political affiliation because multiple reasons number one i don't like arguing with people i said what i said we move on um i don't mind having discussions with people but when it comes to certain topics people take it so personally when you don't agree with them that it's gonna be a fight and i'm talking about even the dumbest things i have literally gotten into a fight with somebody and mind you it was a one-sided fight i was on the other side like i don't know what is happening over a cookie we were fighting over a cookie a cookie a biscuit we were fighting over an actual cookie cookie because i posted a brand and i don't want to say them just because i don't want to turn into like because other people hate them then i was like my problem it's a brand that i actually like their cookies every single time i go to somebody's house and they're like oh it's, uh, it's my daughter's birthday come through i always buy cookies from these people i like their cookies my friends like their cookies they do and i posted and i was just like oh my god these guys send me a pr because i'm always buying cookies from them that is so sweet because i buy cookies from them a lot somebody caught some mad feelings about this cookies because because they, they don't like the cookies which you're allowed to not like something that is fine but that does not negate that somebody else likes it like just because you don't like the color purple don't get mad at me because i love purple so this person went off on me talking about, oh, I can't believe you're promoting them. Their cookies are horrendous. They're not, like, they're trying to say that they're gourmet, but they're not gourmet. And I was literally on the other side, like, number one, not promoting them. I didn't have to talk about them. I've talked about them before when I purchased things. I like their cookies. It's just as simple as that. I just like their cookies. Oh, then you clearly don't have good taste. Da -da 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 -da. And I was just like, it's a cookie like it's it's a cookie and I've had arguments like that about bras like it's a, like I like that bra why does it bother you that that I like that bra now imagine uh, talking about politics with some people on the internet like I can't I can't and I'm okay with having discussions but some people just make me want to look at them like I don't even want to I don't want to fight you and I mean that respectfully I don't want to argue with you like I just don't another reason is because of what I do um for me in order for me to make a living I have to associate myself with certain brands now brands in general try not to associate themselves with any political party because they're trying to be neutral so that they can be able to sell to everybody right and if I publicly go out being like vote for this person vote for this person vote for this person that means that now the brand that i am representing is now representing that political party whether or not the brand did not say that does that make sense and before somebody is just like but that's wrong you should be able to be using your platform to talk about the political aspect of things it's just the way the world works because people would not have because most people do not have the same energy for, for example, news anchors. News anchors represent a news station. News stations have to remain neutral because they have to, number one, they have to report on everything, including political beefs or whatever. They have to be able to stay neutral. But outside of that, these news stations and TV stations have to make money in order for them to pay the news anchors the photojournalist, the the janitor who cleans the news station or the TV station or whatever. And in order for them to make that money, in order to do that, they have to get advertising money. And the only way to do that is to, again, just like me, stay politically neutral when it comes to the public space. I hope y'all understand. Don't at me. Um, 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 um how do you edit your videos i use davinci resolve on my laptop and on my phone i use inshot and then i use another app called tezza to sharpen it and make it um higher quality um yeah I, I'll, I'll put them down below is it advisable to move in with your boyfriend after two months of dating 
but number one I, I have to ask how old you are um, if you're in your early 20s dear God no dear God no because I've seen people who are older do that and my one of my high school teachers married her husband after knowing him for less than two months like they were already married by their second month of being together and even knowing each other's existence and they're still married but also she did this at the age of 35 like i feel like they were just at that age where they know what it is that they want and this person is perfect for that and they they like they knew themselves and they knew what they're looking for in a partner so it was like it was an easy thing but yo girl i i i don't know me i just learned just mind your business have you ever just drunk water and made your business if you love him i guess it is what it is me <laughs> also i learned this from my mom don't move in with anybody that you've never had a big fight with you don't know how or who somebody really is until they're their angriest how long do my lashes last my lashes last for about four to five weeks right now i'm on the four week mark so yeah and i got my lashes done by marianne i'll put her information down below she's the bestest okay i think i'm just gonna wrap it up here and then we're just gonna go and make some salmon for dinner with my air fryer oh sorry there's one thing about schooling that i saw um, especially for girls doing STEM courses like um, architecture, which universities are better, the US or the UK. I receive a lot of questions like this. Y'all, I don't know, like these are Google questions. I do not know. But the one thing that I can tell you about university and college, don't rush to get in just because you're like, oh, I'm 17, I have to be in college next year. Like, don't rush. And the reason why I'm saying this is do your research check every single option that is out there when it comes to whatever degree that you're trying to do and try getting scholarships get scholar like do you know how many people who i know who are in debt up to their eyeballs with um college fees that they still have not paid off because this is the fun thing that people don't realize you will rush into a school just to rush into a school you or your parents will have to take out a ridiculous amount of loans because also a lot of people don't realize that when you go to school outside of Kenya, you have to pay international fees. International fees are basically almost even double in some colleges, in some universities, than what a resident or um, a citizen of that country would be paying. Like, a, like I'm talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So, do your research, find out how many, like, find out which schools in your um field that you're trying to get into which schools give scholarships to to international students what do you need to do what do you what paperwork do you need to have um what are the requirements all that stuff do your research don't rush into it just because you're supposed to go into college right now because you could rush into it and then you'll graduate early congrats but now you're two hundred thousand dollars in debt also congrats when if you just took like an extra year to just find schools or even six months or even three months to find just a school that will give you a scholarship. Like my sister. My sister is a freaking genius. Like my sister is a genius. My sister is a genius. She got into every single college that she ever applied for. She did. She even got into Ivy League schools. But the way our bank account is set up. Hakuna pesas. Hakuna. So... She panicked for a little bit, then she got into one school that I think gave her like 80% scholarship. She just had to come up with the 20%. And that 20% was something over $40,000. <laughs> she then took an extra month and she got a scholarship. Full college. They gave her even a computer, dormitory. They fed her. Everything. Everything. Even when she went to do her master's. She went to Georgetown University. That is a big deal school. And she got an amazing scholarship. She had a panic moment and I kept on looking at her like, I'm the idiot of the family. Why are you panicking? Like, eh. schools would beg to have you. And they were. They were begging. Not everybody was willing to pay full, like for her to go to the school, but a lot of them were. But she just applied to some more schools and then she got a full ride. 
plus a stipend, which means that they give her cash. To, like they give her living expensive money. To go, like they paid her to go to school. She says, no, it's, it's a stipend. They paid you to go to school. They paid you to go to that school. I don't care what you say. Um, so yeah, that is my one advice. Don't go into debt if you do not have to. If you need to take an extra six months to find a school outside this country because a lot of people i know they just want to leave the country which is great whatever live your life to each his own but just don't rush take your time nobody's mad about anybody trying to go into an international school live your life but if you can get a scholarship whomst are we to say no that is from what's auntie joy let's go make someone Okay, let's make this delicious salmon that I love to have with my salad. It takes less than 50 minutes and I love it. It's delicious. So basically in a jar, I'm just going to throw in a little bit of lemon pepper, some Spanish paprika, a little bit of garlic powder, some ginger powder, and then I just mix it in well. I then take my salmon pieces and then sprinkle it all through the entire piece, front and back, making sure it is well covered and well seasoned because we like our food seasoned and then just throw in a little bit of salt after the fact just so i make sure that i don't over salt it now i'm just gonna throw it into the air fryer first putting a little bit of oil onto the base throwing in the salmon and then dabbing a little bit of olive oil just on the top throw it in there and then i just like to throw in the air fryer for less than 10 minutes but i just check on it until i feel like it is perfectly fine then I kind of took off the skin. You'll see why later. Um, now for my salad, it is just a very simple salad and I've thrown on my dressing that I made. This is a peanut dressing. It's a little bit sweet, a little bit of tang. It's delicious. I'm gonna put the recipe down below. Then I just throw on the salmon on top. Now for the salmon skin pieces, I threw them back into the air fryer and fried them up until they're nice and crunchy. Throw them onto the salad and then I just break it apart and enjoy this baby. Oh, it is so good. It's so good. It's so good. And then I put the salmon skin. I fried it a little bit longer. And also because I packed the other one for tomorrow. And salmon skins get soggy in the fridge. So I just made it a little salmon crisp. Do you see that little crisp? Do you hear that crunch? Do you hear that crunch? This one slaps. Mm-hmm. Like the peanut, the salad, the sweetness from the apples. The sauce has like, the peanut butter has a vinegar for a little, well, apple cider vinegar, for a little tinge. The salmon is delicious, simple. I slightly overcooked it. But usually when it comes to salads, I prefer my salmon to be like fully cooked. I don't know why, like the consistency of it being broken apart throws me off. And you don't know why. But like if I was eating with like mash or rice or whatever, and I was making it fresh, I would prefer it to be uh, medium well. But when I do do my meal preps, I do like make it well done. And the only reason I do that is just because I'm so scared of getting like some sort of sickness by putting medium well fish in the fridge or even the freezer and then trying to deep frost it. It just doesn't, it just don't seem right. Anyways, so I'm done and I will see you guys next week. It's going to be a vlog. Cheers. Ciao!